Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Maracaibo, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the 17th century Caribbean, where players are privateers trying to earn fortune and glory. And I'm going to be showing you how this works today in a solo run-through, and I've got the game mostly set up. Here I am over here with my ship, and here is Jean's ship, my opponent, who has a slightly different board than me. She also has a deck of Atoma cards that have been randomized and shuffled up that will determine what she's going to do. Uh, you can increase her difficulty by putting tougher and tougher, more powerful cards in this deck. I'm playing at medium difficulty today. And there's a couple more steps I have to do before we start playing. Uh, one is I have to decide if I am going to be playing the standard game or the campaign game because Maracaibo comes with a big old deck of story cards that reveals branching plot lines and characters and um, you know uh, stories and whatnot that you can play through over many uh, successive uh, sessions of the game. That's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be continuing the story that I've started out on, and uh, that means there's potentially just the tiniest, tiniest bit of story spoilers. But don't worry, folks. I'll warn you before the spoilers happen, and you can avert your eyes. Now, instead of playing through the campaign, we could pretty much ignore this entire deck of cards, except for uh, these three cards that tell us how to set up the game if we are ignoring the entire campaign, which means there's uh, some rules about how to set up quests, because we don't have any story-driven quests. Instead, we just have randomly generated quests and randomly, uh, or not randomly, pre-chosen special locations on the board. I am not going to use these preset ones, so my story is going to continue, and that means I got to get out the blue baggie. The game actually comes with, you know, regular translucent bags, but it also comes with this special story blue baggie, which is where you keep all of the story-driven content from game to game. And when you set up, you just bring it out. And so this is the current chapter. It's card number 16 out of that ginormous deck. I'll come back to that in a second. But uh, based on my ex ad adventures so far, we have unlocked Cuerto Cabezas. Which, don't worry folks, if you played the standard version of the game without story, this is always here. I had to play through a few games before this got unlocked. And Puerto Cabezas always has a quest at the ready just waiting to be completed. But um, under certain circumstances, it might not have been there and this is just a regular village. Alrighty, so, and we also have a couple more tiles that indicate, well, there is trouble in these, in Portobello and Bluefields. You can't stop in these locations to do regular village actions because there's pirate activity in the area. And let's see, also, there are storms of Bruin south of Port Royal that make it a little bit more uh, time consuming to sail this way. And so instead, we might sail this way and go through those pirate waters. But don't worry, uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay. And then also, the most important thing there is this card, card number 16. Now, I'm about to show you what this card says. And if you don't want to know anything, all this card is going to tell you is the name of a character in the game. It doesn't even say what they're all about. Um, that, you know, comes up later and all that. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and put this on screen. Avert your eyes if you don't want the name of a character revealed. And otherwise, you can read that little paragraph that tells you what our current story-driven objective is. Specifically, it says we have to put a quest marker on Space 16. And if we were playing a four-player game, we'd also put a quest marker in Space 2. I'm playing effectively a two-player game right now, so we'll ignore that. We have to put a story marker on 16. And we have to add another tile to the board, L22. Okay, folks, you can look again. The uh, story is not spoiled. Alrighty, so L22 is another little one. And, okay, it replaces Space 12. We've got more trouble brewing over in Santa Marta. And, let's see, we have to put our first story quest on Space... on Space 16 over here in Pirate Waters. And, again, we would put another randomly generated quest right here if we were playing a four-player game. But in a two, one, two, or three-player game, we've got this quest and we've got this quest, plus we've got these three quests down here that we could go on. So this stays up here as a reminder of what we have to do to complete this quest right here. And uh, basically, 
we have to visit that location with a spyglass and a map. And if we do, we will unlock all of these bonuses and we will claim the quest tile, which means the story will continue forward. Now, either I could complete this quest, which was, again, what the story was, or my opponent could, and it's a race to get over there with the right resources. So we'll see how that pays off. Also, we can see in the queue that later on, another quest is going to appear, which requires two books. So I could start um, collecting books, knowing that this quest will eventually, in this session, get added somewhere onto the board. Okay, so... I've set up my campaign. I'm continuing my story with uh, this little bit of text. And like I said, this is just one chapter in a very long story that you can play through. And now the last thing I have to do is I have to set myself up. As part of setup, I have two Admiralty cards that will give me objectives I'm trying to pursue over the course of the game. And I have a hand of eight project cards. Now, I am only going to keep five of these cards, and the rest are going to get discarded, and I'm only going to keep one of these two cards. Let's see here. And I got to decide which one I'm going to keep. Oh, by the way, I should say, the first printing of the game, the Adventure card, unfortunately had some typos, so you can see I took a Sharpie. You can contact the publisher. They, as they, they are going to print up re uh, replacements for these, and players can order the replacement cards, but it was easy enough just to say, hey, these were actually um, two gold and two fame instead of three, and this was supposed to be a four instead of a three. So just a couple little fixes like that had to happen. And there's a couple of other cards that also had some very, very minor typos like that. Okay, so I got to decide, do I want to follow the path of adventure or power? So power means, well, always, no matter what path, you always want to complete quests. Although if I go for adventure, quests are worth more money and points than they are if I go for power. If I go for power, I'm going to want to get assistance out on the board. Whereas if I go for adventure, I don't care about assistance. If I go for power, I want to really focus on influencing one nation. Whereas adventure, I want to influence two nations, although I'll score less for them. And let's see. So that defines what I'm going to be all about. But how do I choose? Well, in part, it's based on the current state of the board. But more importantly, what cards do I have available to me? I've got the innkeeper, who is an assistant, all right? There's an assistant. Maybe I want to go for assistance. I've got the sailor who helps me fight, which would let me um, get more influence with the uh, countries. I've got a master builder, which just makes it cheaper to hire other project cards. Uh, Lone Shark Diego. Okay, he's a special character. He's a... Is he? Oh, he's an assistant too. That's two assistance cards. All righty. A mercenary, which is another assistant. A qu and uh, who lets me gain influence with the various nations. A quest hunter who gives me a compass and uh, allows me and basically makes money for me. And a harbor. Very expensive to build my own harbor, but it can generate tons of victory points for me. And an explorer who, as you might imagine, helps me explore. Okay, so I'm going to pick five of these cards. Oh, and by the way, this explorer is an assistant as well. I got all... I mean, you might get... Your starting hand might have no assistance. Okay, I think I'm going to go for the path of power because I can just have all these assistants right off the get-go. So to heck with adventure. Bye-bye. We're not going for that today. I am going to try and complete quests, hire assistants, and get a lot of influence with one nation. And with that in mind, of my five cards, I'm going to keep the explorer and the mercenary, uh, Diego... And the innkeeper. That's four of my five, and I got to keep one of these. So the harbor gives me lots of victory points. It's a super expensive. This would be a long term project. The quest hunter makes money for me every round. The uh, build makes it cheaper. Uh, I think I'll skip the uh, master builder. The sailor. The sailor helps me fight on behalf of the nations. That might be kind of nice. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's go for the Sailor. And forget about the Harbor. I'm not going to... Oh, I'm, I might regret this later because this is a huge source of points. Plus, also, if I build a Harbor, it gives me Maritime Proficiency, which is a special token I could have. And if I look around, do any of these characters want Maritime Proficiency? No, none of them do. None of them do. Although this is interesting. If I hire the Explorer, it will give me Carpentry 
expertise and carpentry expertise means I will make more points off of my harbor. So these two cards, this gives me carpentry, this wants carpentry, these two combo well together. So maybe, what the heck, let's go for it. I'm going to go for carpentry and I'm going to keep all these assistants. Alrighty. Uh, and so I'm going to say goodbye to the sailor and the builder and the quest hunter. All right. Now there's one more choice. Of these five cards I've still got, four of them will be in my hand, and one of them will be in my reserved area up here. And this harbor is going to take me a long time to build. It's going to take a while before I get 16 doubloons. I start with eight. So I'm just going to go on ahead and reserve this. Which means it's effectively part of my hand. Uh, so it's functionally, I've got a hand of five cards, except I have limited use of this. I can have up to three cards reserved, and that means all I can do is spend the resources to get them built, to get these projects completed. What I cannot do, because I put this up here, is these cards are multi-use. I could spend 16 doubloons to get a two-point harbor, which could uh, give me maritime proficiency and increase my victory points if I'm in good with nobility and I have carpentry skills. Or instead, I could ignore all of that, and this uh, gives me herbs, medicinal herbs, and sugar. So I could use it for these two icons for everything else. By reserving it, I have given up the opportunity to use this as sugar or medicinal herbs. All I can do with this card is pay 16 doubloons and start raking in the big points because I have my own harbor built someplace. These other cards, they're in my hand. They're all multi-use as well. I need um, 7 doubloons plus I have to have a crew member I can deploy to activate my explorer. He'll be worth 2 points at the end of the game. And that means he'll give me carpentry, which is good good for my harbor, and he'll make uh, money for me and help me explore. But that means I'm giving up the opportunity to use this card to deliver corn or treasure maps. And remember, what did I want? Treasure maps someplace? Uh, yes, I do. I need a spyglass and a treasure map to complete this goal. So I might do the explorer for to get the assistant, because that's one of my goals, plus assistants are powerful. Or I might come over here, because with these cards, well, let's see, I've got the treasure map, but I do not have a spyglass that I need to complete the quest, which is what this story chapter is. Hmm. There's one more thing I have to consider. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this game, folks. Uh, but it has to do with these royal cards up here. Four of them are chosen every time randomly. These are prestige cards. The first one that's been revealed is the Naval Academy. If I invest in the Naval Academy, which costs 20 doubloons, that's crazy expensive, um, and I deploy one of my crew here, then I will get in good with nobility which I think helps with that harbor I want to build. And at the end of the game, I will get two points for every upgrade to my ship. Naval Academy wants to see upgrades to the ship. So this is a uh, victory point goal that everybody has the opportunity to go for if they want to make the huge investment. Alrighty. Which means, you know, if I knew this was out, maybe I would have chosen... Let's see, what did Adventure? No. Yeah, Adventure gives me points for upgrades. So, if I wanted to get points for upgrades over here, I probably would have wanted to go for points off of this instead. But I had all those assistants, so I didn't go for adventure. I went for power. I might still go for this, because, hey, ship upgrades are good, as you might imagine. But anyway, we are now. Thank you for your patience. That was a lot of setup. You would like me to play the game now, wouldn't you? All right, let's go. The Spanish main awaits. All right, so, on my turn, uh, you go through... Three simple steps. First, you sail your ship. You can move one to seven spaces. This whole board is basically an elaborate rondelle that we're constantly sailing clockwise around. And so I can move one to seven spaces. Wherever I end up, I interact with that space. If it's a city, I can deliver goods, i.e. discard cards, to upgrade my ship. Plus, I can do whatever the action is of the city. If it's a village, I can do village actions, which means I can pay whatever resources I need to get these cards into play, including the one that's reserved, including the prestige. This prestige card is effectively considered to be in my hand as well for the action of buying cards. I can buy my way into the academy, I could buy my way into building a harbor, or I could hire an explorer, an innkeeper, Diego, or a mercenary. So that's one of the things. You don't do those in the city. You do these at a village. Or, if I'm at a village, I can just make some money. Buy one... Uh, doubloon or two doubloons if I trash all the cards in my hand. Or 
Instead of any of these actions, if there's a quest where I am, I can complete the quest. Or wherever I end up, if I have an assistant there, I can interact with the assistant instead of all of this other stuff. So first I move, then I do one of these actions. And in addition to the main action I'm going to do, I can also, anytime I want, fulfill career goals, which is what my power is. I can fulfill these goals and I can start a project, which means I can take more cards out of my hand and basically bank them up here so that I've got less cards in my hand because at the end of every turn, I will refill up to my hand size. That is the name of the game. And so we are off to the races. I'm the first player. I can move up to seven spots. Where do I want to go? Well, I would like to get over... Well, actually, I can't do this quest... And remember, I do want to get quests. I get, um, you know, once I have completed two quests... Oh, by the way, I should say, this card is supposed to have three crew members on it. Completing these objectives immediately... Oh, but I'm a green player. I shouldn't put a green player in front of a green screen. Let's just put this over here instead. I am supposed to have one, two, three. If I complete these objectives, I get more crew, plus money or points. And if once I get two quests, I can complete this objective and get two bucks. But if I wait until I've got three quests, I can get two bucks and two victory points. And either way, I get the crew member. So I've got this in the back of my mind. I'm trying to complete quests and get the uh, assistance and influence nations as fast as possible so I can unlock all of these benefits. I started with eight doubloons. So where am I going to go? I think... I think I would... I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to travel far and fast. Remember, I can move up to seven. Let's go. One. Two. Now I can go either way. I'm going to go quicker. Uh, this is it. There's more steps to go through Porta Plata. I'm going via Santo Domingo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have sailed all the way over here to Tucumana. Why have I sailed so far? Especially since there's nothing over here in Kamana. There's no cities to interact with. This is just a regular village. Well, remember, if I go to a village, I can buy cards or make money. And later on, if I upgrade my ship, I can get other village actions I can do as well. Now, um, if you go to a city, you get to do one action. You, if you complete a quest, you complete one quest. So you do the action of assistant. Villages are a little special because you get to do one, two, or three village actions depending on how far you've traveled. Since I just traveled seven steps, my maximum distance, that means I get to do three actions in this village. Must be because I sailed so fast, we didn't slow ourselves down, and we got here so we had time to spare. Whereas if I was sailing slower and not going as far, I wouldn't get as much stuff done. So I'm going to get to do any combination of three of these actions. Making money or buying cards. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire one of my cards. I do not have 16 doubloons, so it's not the harbor. So do I want to... I do have seven... I have eight doubloons, so I can hire any one of these cards. Do I want to hire the Explorer, the Innkeeper, the Lone Shark Diego, or the Mercenary? Okay... I will hire... I think I'm inclined to go with Lone Shark Diego because he gives me... Every time I visit him in the future, he gives me three victory points and five doubloons. And I want to save up money to build this harbor. He makes more money... I mean, the innkeeper makes three doubloons for me. The explorer makes two, although he really helps me explore as well. Except, as a, a, since I'm seeking power, I don't particularly care that much about exploring. Exploring is still a great source of resources, but... And I'd like to get that carpentry, but I don't need that carpentry until I build my harbor. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to get an assistant. I'm gonna spend five doubloons and one of my crew deploying it to location eight on the board to um, enlist the services of Lone Shark Diego. Alrighty, and so uh, I take one of I started with two crew. You can see I can get more crew by completing my objectives. Diego is over here in Martinique. Now, in the future, if I visit this location, I will immediately score three points and five doubloons. Alrighty, and so this card is actually now in play. Uh, these are the cards that are in my hand and the ones that I've got. Okay, and now, you might say, oh, well, woe is me. Uh, he's behind me. And if you look closely at the board, 
you will certainly notice that players only get to travel in one direction. I'm here. I have to keep on going clockwise. I cannot go back to visit Diego. I'll have to visit him in the second round after we reset and start back at Havana. But that's okay because assistants always help. If in a given round you have assistants on the board and you cannot visit them because you pass them or because they get deployed behind you, um, instead of doing their normal action, they will score you two victory points. And since I put him back, I, it's impossible for you to visit him. I will just go on ahead and score two points. Next time, in round two, I'll visit him and make all that money and points. Okay, so um, now that was only my first of three village actions. I get to do two more. And so instead of making this huge jump to come all the way over here, what I could have done instead is I could have just come to Petit uh, Goave. And that meant, since I only moved one, two spaces, I only would have gotten to do one village action. Now, the one village action I would have done would have been to hire him, and then that means he would have been down here, and I could still visit him later on. Instead of just, you know, having to pass him and get the two points. But, um, I'm just making the big jump because, uh, well, I'd like to get to this quest. Although, my problem is, I don't have the resources I need to complete that quest. But I've still got some more traveling I could do before I get here. Alrighty, so, I get to do two more actions. And remember, those actions are, get a doubloon, or discard my hand. And reserve cards don't cons aren't in my hand. Discard all the cards of my hand, all of them, and get two. Now, here's the deal. I've got a trick. I don't want to discard any of these guys because they're all great assistants and I'm trying to get assistants. Although I only need three assistants and I've got four, so my assistant cup runneth over. I think I am going to, here's what I'm going to do. Two of these assistants, I'm going to bank over here so they're no longer in my hand. That means I only have to jettison one card and then I'll get the full two doubloons. Alrighty, so let's go on ahead and, let's see, I think I want to keep the mercenary because he lets me get in good. And I do have a goal of trying to get in good with the nations. So I'm going to bank him. And the innkeeper makes money. And two victory points per assistant. So every time I visit her, I will get six points once I've got my three assistants on the board. So that's pretty nice. Let's keep her. Alrighty. So now, that, remember... That was an act of starting projects. I have started the project of recruiting a mercenary and an innkeeper. Those are free actions I can do whenever I want on my turn during step B. So now, back to the two additional actions I get to do. Oh wait, Oh, but before I do any of that, remember, I had to pay for Diego. He cost me five of my starting eight. Let's not forget that. Very important. So, my second action is, I am going to jettison all the cards remaining in my hand. I'll say goodbye to this explorer and get two doubloons. And then my third action, I can't do that again because I got nothing in my hand. My third and final action is I will just get a single doubloon. So effectively, hiring Diego only cost me um, two doubloons because I just made three back. And I've gone halfway around the Caribbean. I'm rushing towards this quest as fast as I can. Although, remember, my problem is to complete this quest, I need a spyglass and I need a treasure map. At this point, I've got nothing in my hand. But we are now going to do the final step, redraw cards. I get to refill up to my hand size, which is four. And I can draw blind or I can draw from the display. And that has to do with um, this area over here. As you can see, there are four cards on display. A pinnacle, another pinnacle, a smuggler, and a pioneer. And... There is a there's a spyglass and there's a treasure map. So those are the two cards I need not to hire the smuggler or you know um, you know hire the pinnacle, have another ship as part of my fleet, not to do those, but to discard these so that I can complete the quest when I arrive over here. And this is a reminder of what the quest is. So, I'd like to get those two cards, because I'm refilling my hand back up to four. But here's the problem. If I take the displayed cards, the cards are on display, I have to pay a doubloon for each one of them. Now, instead, I can just draw a blind from the deck and not pay anything. So, I'm going to draw I'm gonna draw my first two cards, and hopefully, I will get the, the uh, stuff I need for this quest, and I won't have to worry about paying doubloons to get these. So, my first card I get, it's a smuggler! But unfortunately, this smuggler has corn and books. 
The one I wanted was over here. He had tobacco and treasure maps. So this guy's useless to me. He's still somebody I can hire. He, he Hey, he's another assistant who I would deploy to Area 7. And every time I visit him, he would let me convert um, cards directly into points and money and influence. All right, so that's my first dr blind draw. Here's my second blind draw. And I get a priest... Wait, oh, that's a spyglass. Okay, that's one of the two cards I need. But that means this priest is awesome. If I paid 15 doubloons to hire him, he would increase my victory point income every round by eight if, I have, if I'm renowned and I'm in good with nobility. I don't have either of those, um, the, those disciplines at the moment. So I think I'm going to be using him for a spyglass to help me on the quest. All right, so I've drawn two. I know I still need a map. Let's draw blind one more time, and hopefully I'll get what I need. And I get another spyglass for hiring this pioneer. Nope. All righty. Drat. All right, then uh, for my last one, I am going to pay one doubloon to grab this smuggler. And uh, that means I've now got three spyglasses, a treasure map, and a book. That's what I need to complete the quest, which I am zipping towards ASAP. And, right, at the end of my turn, the refills, we have a... A commercial expedition, which one could launch, if one has that in their hand. And my turn is over. Phew! That was a lot, wasn't it? Alrighty, but the game is just starting. And now, it is my opponent's turn. Now, if I were playing against Jen, she would, like me, be able to move one to seven spaces wherever she lands. She would interact with that space and whatever's appropriate, do various and sundry things, um, you know, engage in, uh, you know, in battle on behalf of the, uh, the the various countries, or explore the, uh, you know, the the deep, dense uh, heart of of uh, you know of, of all of this area and get stuff along that track. But my opponent is driven by a deck of cards. Let's go on ahead and shuffle their deck one more time. Now let's see what we get. And like I said, or did I say, as part of setup, you can have an easy, medium, hard, or super hard. I think there's like five different difficulty levels. I chose medium difficulty, which means there's always five basic cards in this deck, but then I have added um, two additional cards that may or may not show up. Well, I mean, they'll all show up eventually. So let's see what he's going to do. Or she's going to do. Or he. The name is um, Jean or Jean. Is that that's kind of French. Yeah, I'm going to assume it's he. Or could be she. But anyway, what's Jean up to? Jean is going to move two spaces and um, try to get a quest if they can. Or if they can't get a quest, they are going to visit a city and get in good with Spain. So they basically move gobble up resources like a human player would do, but instead of doing whatever the uh, space they land on says, they get to do specific stuff that their card says. So, Jean is going to move to, get a quest, or get influence in Spain. Okay, so how does that work? Here's Jean, and Jean completely ignores villages. The only time Jean cares about a village is if there's a quest there, because Jean will go for those quests if possible. But, um, so, Jean is going to move two cities, basically. So, one city, they're in Santiago. Second city, they're either going to skip uh, Petit Cove and come over here to Santo Domingo, or Puerto uh, Plata. You can see they've got a choice. How do we know which way they go? The arrow says they go up. So, boom. They have arrived in Puerto Plata, which is a place where, if I'd come here, I could have delivered corn to Puerto Plata to do a village action of my choosing and to increase my standing with one of the nations, which, remember, is one of my goals long term. But since uh, Jean has come here, Jean, well, first of all, Jean says, give me a quest. I will complete the quest. But there's no quest where Jean ended up. So we ignore that. And so instead, Jean says, I am going to make the delivery, because Jean has unlimited resources. I'm going to make the delivery. If it was impossible for Jean to make the delivery, because I had already made a delivery here, then Jean instead would get one card from the display. It would take the first card from the display. But since I haven't been here, Jean is going to make that delivery, which is Jean's first upgrade of his ship. Which means, the more times he makes deliveries, the more points he's going to be generating. The more times I make deliveries, the more upgrades I'm going to apply to my ship. Like, you know, victory points, or money, or giving me extra powers I can do, increasing my hand size, all kinds of stuff. If I upgrade my ship. Jean, he's a little bit simpler. He just, um you know, uh, gets, earns more and more and more and more and more points as he makes more and more and more deliveries. Okay, 
So, Jean has made the delivery, gotten the upgrade. Since he was able to delivery, he didn't do that. And now, he, he ignores what he would what he would normally do. And instead, he just gets one influence with España. So, currently, Spain loves Jean. Discard that card. The dummy is done. The dummy moves are super easy. They achieve everything. They're very, very competitive. You really feel like you're racing against another player trying to grab all the stuff. But their turns are wonderfully implemented. A really good Atama system. All right. They're done. Back to me and my big crazy turns. Alrighty. So, I gotta get over here. I could just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I could, I could get there right now. And remember, I've got the cards I need to complete this quest. But that means I'd be skipping Maracaibo. I'd be skipping Cartagena. Although, Cartagena wants me to deliver corn. I don't think I have any... Yes, I do! I could go to Cartagena and deliver corn. And, uh, which would be my first upgrade for my ship, and I want to upgrade my ship. Remember, the Naval Academy wants me to upgrade my ship. And I would get to explore twice. Uh, but that means I'd have to deliver corn, i.e. give up this Pioneer. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's... Although, if I want to go even slower, I can just, I can just go 1-2, come to Maracaibo, uh, the name of the game, a very important location, as you might imagine. And, at Maracaibo, I can deliver sugar, and then I can do battle on behalf of one of the nations, which is a great way to start uh, working my way up the, the uh, influence chain. Alrighty, although I don't have any sugar, so I don't think now is a particularly good time. I don't have to do both. I could do one, both, or one or the other, but since I don't have sugar, I'm just going to sail on by and stop here in Cartagena, where I can deliver corn, which I will do. Bye-bye, Pioneer. I hardly knew ye, and that means I get to take... Every one of these upgrades has two discs. Taking one gets me halfway there, and then I have to do the upgrade again to, say, um, get this additional village action. Which means if I have this, when I go to villages, uh, I can do a new action, which is increase my military strength. So I'd be halfway towards running that. Or I could just say, hey, you know what? I want more money. I could be halfway towards getting five more doubloons, which I'm going to need to build this crazy harbor. Uh, let's see, there's a couple things I cannot do. I cannot do any of these upgrades, because this one's not available. This is another village action. It's not available until I've done four regular upgrades. And I can't do this one until I've done six other upgrades. And this one is just straight up ten points. This might be something... This might be the last upgrade you do at the end of the game. Oops, and that's in the wrong spot. So, I am going to... I deliver the corn, I get an upgrade. Let's see, this is an interesting one. This kind of increases the speed of my ship. I still only move up to seven, but now I get to do three actions at a village if I only move five spaces instead of seven. So if I plan on doing a lot of village actions, that's a really good move to make. But you know what? Well, I was going to say I want money, but I've got Diego. Diego makes tons of cash for me when I visit him, right? He makes five doubloons for me. If I get his five doubloons and I get these five doubloons, I'll... I'll be uh, rolling in it to get this harbor. I think, yeah, I'm going to go for money. Forget about special powers. I'm all about that money, yo. So, I have made my delivery. And if Jean tries to go to Cartagena now, he cannot make the delivery here, which means he'll just get a freebie card, which is just points to him. Okay, so I've done half of it. Now, I am going to explore. Okie doke. So, let's look at that. You can see both John and I have an Explorer icon, and I get to move up to two spaces. So, now I don't have to go the full two. I could just go one and get three doubloons. Or I can go two and get two victory points. Now, I want to explore as fast as I can. Everything about this game is a race. You want to go around the rondelle as fast as you can. You want to explore as fast as you can. You want to work your way up the influence tracks as fast as you can. You want to complete quests as fast as you can. Everything in this game is a race. So, the race for exploration begins now. I'm in the lead. Do I just want to move one space, get some more money, or get some points? I think I want the money more. Points, I'll worry about that later. So I just, I didn't move my full distance. I get t uh, three more doubloons. And the interesting thing is, because I'm here, if Jean or any other player, if I was playing with more players, they get to hopscotch over me. If Jean moved two spaces, he would go one, two, because I'm occupying a space for him. And, as you can see, there's kind of a finish line here. We are racing to cross this line. Uh, because when we do, you get three um, influence in a... Uh, 
in a, in a country of your choice, which is hugely important for final scoring. Once you move on here, hey, here's a quest you can do. Once the quest is done, it's gone. It doesn't refill. This line over here, crossing the second line, the first player to do it gets four points. The second player to do it, or all other players, only get two points. And then there's another one over here. The first player to do it gets four points. The second player gets two points. So like I said, there are races everywhere. But I'm taking it slow. I'm just doing a little bit of exploration out of Cartagena. That got me three more doubloons, and my second turn is over, and I'm about to get to that quest. And I'm not worried, because the most that Jean could move would be two cities, which means he would move here. <gasps> oh! 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 I forget just how fast Jean is. Jean can be fast. Remember, you saw Jean move two. If Jean were to draw this right now, he would go one... And boom, he's in his first city, and then he moves to a second city. Since he goes up, he would come here. But if it's a down, he would go here and get to the quest before me. Oh, I might regret this. I, I, well, but that's the nature of this game. It's you're always racing, trying to get there ahead of other players. And you know, so if you stop and, and mess around with stuff, other players will be. Let's see what John does. Please, not a two, not a two down. I just don't want to see a two down. I do not want to see a two. <gasps> no. Boom. All right, that means I paid doubloons to hire that guy for nothing. John is going down. He he ignores all these spaces. He ignores villages unless there's a quest there. He's got to his first city. He goes again. He comes to the intersection. It says, go low. And boom. Oh, Jean, you're killing me. And Jean got to the quest before me. Now, I, of course, as a human player, had to collect the right resources to complete that quest. Jean has all the resources he needs to do anything. So he has completed that quest. No! It's gone. He will score this at the end of the game. He doesn't care about anything. It's just the more... He gets five points per quest. And if he has more quests than me at the end of the game, he can potentially get a whole bunch of additional points. If he has more quests than me, if he has more upgrades than me, and if he has done more exploring than me. And the more he beats me in these metrics, the more points he gets. So, oh, that is heartbreaking. But, okay, so because somebody has done this quest, when we get to the end of the round, we will flip this card over and read what happens next. But that won't happen until the end of the round. You can see there's a little reminder. Complete quest, story quests get resolved there. All right, damn you, John. Oh, it could have been anything but that. It could have been that, or that, or that, or that. Oh, man, he had a, he had a what? A, that's a one in four chance. And he, oh, John, John. All right. So anyway, so he is done because it said, hey, t I'll take a quest if I can. If I couldn't take a quest, I would make a delivery. If I can't make a delivery, I'll get a card. Anyway, regardless, he's, um, um, so, and since he did a quest, he is not going to get one influence with England. Because you can see, it's get a quest or do this combination of stuff. John! Alrighty, my turn. And I was right there. I was going to complete the quest, but now... Uh, well, I could go to Puerto Cabezas, where I need two spyglasses. And I had a spyglass! I did have two spyglasses, but I got rid of this for the corn to upgrade my ship. No! No! Oh, that is heartbreaking. Okay, well... So, well, what am I going to do now? Well, I can move up to seven spaces. There is no reason to come here. Because of the pirate activity in this area... Oops, sorry, that's the wrong view. I would get nothing. I would get to do no village actions. There's no reason for me to come here. Because, again, pirate activity means no village actions. We'll find out what the story was at this location soon. So I could sail on over to uh, Puerto Cabezas, where, if I could complete this quest, if I have two spyglasses which I do not, I could immediately get one victory point per compass I have. And at the beginning of the game, I have one compass. As I hire certain people, that might give me more compasses to do compounding bonuses. So I would get one point, and I would do another double explore action, which means I could then move over here to get another uh, doubloon or two points. All right, well, and more importantly, I would get the quest. Because uh, the more quests I get... Well, if I can earn enough quests, I start earning points If I, once I've done my 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th quest. So I want to do quests like crazy too. But I can't complete this because I don't have spyglasses. So I could still come here 
to deliver corn, which I do not have. But I, I don't think I'm going to do that. So I am going to move on, folks. We're about to... I'm just going to go. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have finished my first uh, trip around the Caribbean because Space 20 here has a little hand. That means I cannot move any farther forward. When, as soon as somebody reaches this space, they have triggered the end of the first of four rounds. The game takes... We will get to make four trips around the Caribbean. And I've just triggered the end of the first round. If I didn't do it, he was going to do it next round because you can see how fast he moves. So, the hand means I can't go any farther because actually I have to come over here. When somebody gets to this space, that means everybody else who is still on the map gets one more turn and then that player will finish the round and score three points. But in the meantime, because I have just come here, I have a choice. I can do... Well, I, all I can do is I can do two exploration, which you already saw, or I can engage in combat on behalf of England, France, or Spain. And what the heck? Let's go on ahead and engage in combat. I could explore, but again, it's just going to be two. It's getting me closer to this big threshold. And you know, when I get to this space, I get to do another upgrade on my ship. If, if it were three, I would come here, I'd get the other upgrade of my ship, make the five doubloons, but I'm not going to do it. We're going to do war. War! Okay, so here's how that works. First of all, uh, there, we had these gigantic stacks of uh, battle chips. Just pick one randomly, and this is the one I've got. And this tells me what the relative strength of the three nations are right now. At this moment, France is the strongest. They have four... Basically, I am going to lead their troops into battle and take over a city somewhere on the map. France has four total strength. Spain is the weakest. They only have two strength, but they know they're weak. So they say, if you lead our troops into battle, we will give you two more doubloons because we know we're so weak. Um, England is in the middle. They've got three total strength. They know they're a bit weaker, so they'll say, hey, we'll give you one glory, one victory point if you lead our troops into battle. So I have to decide which group am I going to go with right now. Nom, 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 nom. I will go with... Oh, also, there's another thing. This up here at the top says that if I go with the weakest uh, country uh, at the moment, they will get plus three. But the weakest, about for the purposes of this, what that means is the country that has the fewest claimed locations on the board. Now, at the beginning of the game, in a two-player game, uh, Spain has San Juan, England has St. Kitts, and uh, France has Martinique. So they're all tied. But if France and Spain had claimed more location and England had the least amount of influence on the board, that means England would be three plus three. They would have a total strength of six. And I'd still get the uh, bonus for going with them. Now, as it stands right now, that bonus doesn't exist because they're all equal at the beginning of the game. So I got to choose. Do I get four? Do I lead an uh, army of four? Or three or two and make some money along the way. I would like to have a strong... Okay. I... Well, here's another thing i got to consider. Right now, Jean is in good with Spain. I don't want Jean to be winning on any of these. So I think I will back Spain. They're the weakest right now. And they're so happy that I'm going to lend them my military brain power. I get... Two more doubloons. Thanks, Espana. And that means I have two total strength to um, claim terrain out on the board. But that's not all. If I want, I for every one of... Actually, there's a reminder of it over here on the player. This is the main... This is our turn structure. Combat is the most complex action you can do in the game. Here's the way combat works. We reveal the chip. I already did that. I choose a nation. I've already done that and got the bonus. I determine combat value. It's two. They don't get a bonus. Um, plus, so it's two. Plus, if I want, I can give up my crew members. Not my assistant. They're already out there. But I have one more crew member that I've had from startup. I could give up that crew member and increase so that I'd have three total combat strength. Also, at the beginning of the game, I have one personal mil or combat strength. I could spend that to increase them by one. So, I could increase them from 2 to 4 if I give up my other crew member and I give up my military strength. Once I have chosen whatever I'm going to do, I then spend that those combat actions. That's why I'm, I'm getting... I spend that combat value I've earned to do combat actions. And at the beginning of the game, there are two types of combat actions. I can just get glory 
with the uh, country. I don't know if that means I'd put on a parade for them or something like that. If, if I spend two combat value, I get one influence. If I spend five, I get two. Now, in addition to or instead of that action, I can spend four combat value to actually claim a city and get influence with the country and get the bonus of that city. If I spend six combat value then that means I can take over a city that belongs to another country and then get all the rewards. Now remember, I have a total of two, which is not much. That's uh, not so very good. Um, which means, well, I cannot claim any cities on the board, but I could just move myself up one space on the track. Um, now remember, I can get two more by jettisoning my other person who I need to use as an assistant, because I want to get more assistance out on the board. But if I jettison him, I go to three, and if I jettison that, I go to four, and then I could claim Santiago in the name of Spain, and that would get me four doubloons. That would be the best one. I could get three doubloons, two doubloons, or I could get some points over here. So I could give up my last crew member and my, la my last little bit of military strength and get four doubloons. Which would put me at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is too shy of what I need to build that harbor. All right. So, since I'm not going to make enough money by conquering Santiago, I am just going to spend... I got two doubloons out of it. I'm just going to spend the measly two combat value to give me. I'm not going to deploy any of my own resources to this. And with two, I am just going to increase my standing by one. Alrighty, uh, take that, John. Spain, Spain loves me as much. Now, the way this works is at the um, end of the game, the the more and more territory that has been claimed by the various countries, you reveal more and more bonus points that they are worth. And the further along you are, the more you get a multiplier. So if I'm all the way over here and say by the end of the game, Spain has conquered all of these spaces, then they've got one, two, three, four times four. That would be 16 points for me because Spain is very powerful and they love me. They love me so much. And remember, I've also got that secret or that public goal of getting power. If I get a total of eight, um, if, if I make it all the way up here to 8, then I get 4 bucks. If I make it all the way up here to 12 in a given country, I make 4 bucks and 4 points. Either way, I also unlock another crew member. So, I do want power. I'm power mad, and now that I've kind of uh, started to work on Spain, I might keep on working on it. But right now, that's a ways in the future. Because Spain mics me a little bit. And of course, they have not conquered any of this stuff. So, right now... My influence in Spain is worth one times one. It is worth one point. That's not great. Although there's also bonuses as well because um, whoever is the highest in each of these three, if I recall correctly, gets three bonus points at the end of the game for having the most influence. So there's nine points to be had for having majorities here or you know being furthest along. And also, if Spain is the most powerful on the board, has the most claimed territory, they add two to their total strength as well. So this can really combo to be quite a lot of in-game points if you play your cards right. So anyway, I just did this to make a little bit more money so I can get that much closer to buying my harbor. Because once I've got this harbor, I can score every at the end of every round four or six total victory points if I've got carpentry and or nobility on my side. Although ironically, did I get rid of the... I got rid of the character who gave me my carpentry! Oh no! Oh dear! That Yeah, who was it I got rid of? I forget now. Oh my goodness. Yes, I got rid of this explorer. This explorer was going to give me the carpentry to make my harbor a good investment. Oh, there's a lot that goes into this game, folks. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we'll worry about all that later. So, I moved in. I um, did some military maneuvers with Spain that got me a little bit of influence. Um, they were so weak that we couldn't do more. I didn't want to commit my own resources to it. So, I have finished a military action. Alrighty, it is now Jean's turn. And this is Jean's last turn of the round. Jean says, I'd like to move one space and do a quest or do my normal stuff. Jean says, I can only move up here because I'm just... Oh no, Jean moves to the next city. Boom! Because this is a city that might not have been here except for certain story events. So Jean moves here and he says, Oh, thank you. I'll complete 
my second quest because I, I can just do stuff. And that means he didn't do anything else. That is 10 points worth of quests that John has now completed. And at the end of the game, he gets an additional 10 points, 20 points, or 30 points. Um, he gets 10 points if he's done more quests than me, 20 points if he's done um, over two more quests than me, and 30 if he's done more than three. So it's important for me to do quests, not only to keep up with Jean, but also because I'm on a quest for power. Oh, and he just gobbled all the quests. Now, the way Puerto Cabezas works, every time a quest is completed, a new one is immediately put there. The ones that we do from exploration, these never get refilled. Uh, the story quests, they get refilled in a different way as well. All right, so that was it for Jean. He just completed his second quest. He's feeling very happy. And now it's my turn. We are in rounds one, two, or three, which means I go this way, and we have triggered the end of the round. And my reward for getting here, three points. All righty. So I'm on the board. One, two, three. Yeehaw. So I'm winning over there. I've got five points, but hey, he's got 10 points in quests. And that's all I do. And that means we now run through this um, interim scoring. At the end of rounds one, two, and three, we do all these steps. At the end of round four, we go this track, which means as soon as somebody gets here, all the other players get two more turns to do something before final scoring happens. So it is time to do interim scoring, which means first of all, Everybody, whether they made it to the end or not, has a choice. They can get two victory points, or they can purchase another card. The same way you saw me do in that village. Now, Jean, he ignores all that. He doesn't care. But I do care. Either I take two points, or I put one of these cards into play. I do have the money to hire the smuggler. The No, not the priest. I can't hire the priest. But I've got two smugglers. Originally, I had these smugglers for a very different reason. They were going to help me with that quest. But as it is... All right. So, let's look at these two smugglers. Because I can't afford them, and that would be... And see, that's why I did not contribute this guy to help the war effort. So I could have taken a... I could have claimed territory. Because then I wouldn't have him to deploy as an assistant smuggler. So, I can deploy this one to location 7, this one to location 12. He's worth 3 points, he's worth 2 points. Now, they both do the same thing. They give me a medal, which maybe will help. It will help. No, nope. currently... Uh, and currently, yeah, that medal is not going to help anything. No car... I don't have any cards that actually benefit from having a medal. But, if I visit my smuggler in the future, I can give up three uh, three cards that have matching goods on them to get... Four bucks and four points, or five bucks and two points, and ooh, I like that smuggler. Now that means I'm going to have to be careful about how I. You know, I'm going to have to be very picky about how I draft cards to be able to make use of that smuggler. But yeah, I think I'm going to. Let's see, and I, I don't have. I have 14. I'm just shy of hiring the priest. If I hire the priest, he'll be worth two points at the end of the game, and he will score me at the end of every round four or eight points if I've got a medal or if I've got nobility. And this guy, so this does work. If I get this medal and I get this priest, this priest will start generating four points for me. So, okay, I'm going to make lemonade out of this lemon after all. I'm going to pay seven and deploy a guy to hire this smuggler. I now have two completed projects. That costs seven. And I'm doing all this instead of getting two points. So here goes my seven doubloons. Here goes my guy. He goes to... Um, he goes to St. Kitts over here, so they're practically right next door to each other. And um, because I did not get to use him this round, I score two more points. Uh, and next turn, remember, I can visit them and use their abilities, or I can sail past them and get four... I mean, these guys could just generate points for me for the rest of the game. Alrighty, so I've got him, and uh, all other players will do this. Next, next, we move on to our income. And that's what... Uh, let's see. I've been talking about income. If I had the priest and I had a medal or and or I had a crown, my um, progress on the money income track and the uh, points, the points income track would generate... Uh, basically, everybody ha can move up. The uh, Jean doesn't do this. Jean just makes points as he goes by finishing stuff. If I were up here, I would now score 7 points or 3 points or 15 points. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you know, so if I had the priest and the medal and the crown, I'd be up here every round. I would score eight points from this priest. And by the same token, over here, everybody automatically gets eight doubloons at the end of every round. That's just a given. But if I, let's see, I don't have any in my hand. Right, no. If I had, 
hired this uh, quest hunter. He would give me, he would have increased me by two, so I'd be making 10 every round, or maybe even 14, if I had a home to put him in. But as is, I have not, I have not increased either of my income tracks, so I just make eight doubloons, which is the default. No extra victory points, because Lone Shark Diego and the Smuggler, they don't play that way. All right, so that was that. Now... We move on to the next step that says, clear out all the delivery spaces. So Puerto Plata and Cartagena can once again have deliveries of corn and corn. Now, by the way, as part of setup, these were all randomly selected. So every time you play, Puerto Plata, Santo Domingo, Port Royal, and Cartagena will have different special abilities and uh, different delivery targets. Uh, all right, but Maracaibo is always the same. It's just a question of whether it's a four-player game or a... Was it a two, three, or a one or two player game that there are less opportunities to deliver, deliver sugar? So we refill all of these. This pinnacle, this pioneer, this commercial expedition, gone. They all get wiped. Four new ones come out. One, a harbor, a branch office, a governor, and a conquering a village, an action I can do. So we clear those out. Now, um, we deal with... Prestige. Our second prestige card is revealed. Remember, if I'd had 20 bucks, I could have sent my guy up here so that I would get the royalty bonus and I would score points at the end of the game. Our second prestige building is the Citadel. The first player to de deploy somebody to the Citadel gets two points. They also, all of these prestige get you in good with the nobility, which could help with cards like, say, the priest. And they give you bonuses. This is final point, two points for every combat and every crew member you've got that you did not use for something else. So you could, I mean, they're normally not worth anything if you don't use them. If you're in with the Citadel, they can be worth something. All right, and now the next step is quest time. And folks, it's a story spoiler moment again, because at this point, if somebody had completed the main story quest of this round, they would now flip this over and we would reveal what is the next step of the chapter, what do we read next, how is the board going to change as we evolve. And the player who completed the quest gets to add this lovely little flag to their board. So they, they fly the flag, indicating that they have completed that quest. Now in this case, Jean has completed the quest. I'm about to flip this over and read what, or you can pause and read if you want. If you don't want to know what the next stage of this story is, ignore this part um, and avert your eyes, but here we go. All righty. I'm reading it myself for the first time. Mmm, -hmm. okay. Oh, yes. Oh. I see. Okay, that could work out pretty well. And so it's after I've read that, the story is continuing. If you're reading this, this should give you an idea of, you know, the, the subterfuge and the plots that continue to evolve. Now it says, read card 17. And then this card is effectively out of the game. This quest is done. So we come back over to the big deck. We find card 17. And again, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler. So avert your eyes. Avert them now! All righty. DTT. Extremely busy. I see. Hmm. Okay, we have a new quest, folks. And it tells us, basically, to put our second chapter uh, goes on to location 19. We need to go to uh, Camarco, and we have to deliver two um, maps to DeMarco to increase our influence with Spain twice, score, get some money, and complete the quest. Also... It says, if we're, put a another random quest at location 16. Okay. All righty. You know, even, you know, so we've got one, two, uh, we got a whole bunch of quests out here. And add card 93 to the discard pile. All righty. There's a new character. Who is a character that, you know, depending on what happens. All right. I'm just going to show. Don't look. Don't look at this character. That's our new character. Okay, you can look now. This character goes into the discard pile and might show up in future adventures and actually help us in our endeavors if we pay the money to have them, you know, not necessarily join our crew, but to be a completed project. Okay, so we've got a new quest. We got, we got a bunch of new quests. We've got a new thing and, um, you know, a new character who will show up and be a continuing character. And the last step is everybody moves over to Havana. And now the game continues. There is no first player marker. I, it, my turn just triggered all that. It is now John's turn. And John says, I'm going to move two going south because I'm feeling brave. 
So he goes one, two. He goes to Santo Domingo. He gets his second. Let's see. He wants a quest. There is no quest. So he gets his second upgrade. And yeah, he got a second upgrade. He didn't take a card because he was able to do the upgrade. And then he scores four points and explores twice. If it were the third or fourth round, he would explore four times because he'd be even braver. So he just scored one, two, three, four points. And he goes boom, boom. He doesn't care about this, but he is now. But now he's given me a chance to leapfrog over him to get more upgrades and get to these quests down here because I got to chase after those quests. Oh, I totally forgot. Um. This is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, folks. He did actually score some points. At the same time that um, I was scoring point, two points or doing a build, he just said, hey, at that point, if I look at his board, I get zero points because he'd only done one upgrade, but he had three cards, and that means he gets a point for each one of these. So he got zero plus three. He scored three points, one, two, three, and then he moved out. He has he is now upgraded. So now he's earning one point plus points for every card he's got at the end of every round. He's blocked this, so I cannot deliver corn. And he is going to explore, which means I could hopscotch over him and try to cross over there. And he is done. And it is my turn. And I would really... Let's see. I need two treasure chests. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Why do I only have two cards in my hand? Oh, hey, folks. Hey, hey, hey. Always... After, at the end of your turn, you always refill your hand. I forgot to refill my hand after I hired the smuggler and all that. Where's the other smuggler? Weren't there two smugglers? Oh, here's the other smuggler. Oh, I, again, watch with the Klingon subtitles. I'm sure Paulo already pointed out that I for, failed to refill my hand. Um, I'll just, I'll go blind and save my money. Alrighty. And what do I have? I've got two, um, I, I've got two spyglasses, herbs, and a map. I need two spy glasses over here. I need a crew member to give up over there. I need two books. I need two maps. Are there any maps out here? No, there's not. So I would like to complete this quest, but I need to, and because it'll get me in really good with Spain, and I want to stay ahead in Spain. And I've got all the way around here. But remember, you saw how fast he can go. He could go fast, he could go slow. Eventually, when his deck runs out, he just reshuffles and keeps going. But in the meantime, I've got a trapper, a drill master, a priest, we already met him, and my other smuggler. So she helps me uh, travel, obviously. He, basically, uh, if I have excess combat, I can spend it with the drill master so I can drill a bit and make money and do two village actions. Oh my gosh, those are all very awesome. So I've got all of that. But I also have two assistants I want to visit. And when I visit the smuggler, I want to have three, and I do, look at this. I've got tobacco, tobacco, tobacco. If I go to the smuggler right now, I could discard all three of these and convert that into five doubloons and two points and a standing. Let's do it. I can go up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have reached St. Kitts. I moved there with six, which means I could do two village actions or I could interact with my smuggler friend. That is totally what I am going to do. Mr. Smuggler says, hey, give up three... I will give up all three of these tobacco, which means I'm giving up on the priest. I'm holding on to this drill master. And that gets me five doubloons. All righty. Thank you. I'm holding on to that. Five doubloons, two more points, and was it one more on a country of my choosing? I'll just keep on working my way up Spain. Although, you know, I want to get to at least level one on all of them because, I mean, it's at least worth a point. Plus, remember, whoever's in the lead on each of these gets three points at the end of the game, but I'll just try and stay ahead of Spain right now. So I've moved over there. Remember, if I hadn't used him, I could have come here and just done village actions, and that means he would have given me two points. But instead, I moved over there. I gave up cards, and now that means I must refill my hand. And I've got another shot at getting the treasure chests I need. Or the, tre the treasure maps. He doesn't have a treasure map. I'm just going to draw three blind and hopefully get the treasure maps because none of these ones that are out on display have them. Show me maps. No, no, no. I didn't get any of them. But now I've got Lawrence de Graff, who is a Spaniard, who I, I, to get him on my side, I need to spend 10. And Spain has to own three locations on the board. So I've got a vested interest if I want to get... I mean, he will increase my income at, for money and points for the rest of the game. Plus, he's worth points himself. Although he's also corn that I could deliver to Cartagena or Puerto Plata. Alrighty, so anyway. So I've done that. That was the end of my turn. John says, hi, let's do it to it, Pruitt. He says, I'm going to move one, which means he's just going to go all the way over here. 
and he hit Maracaibo. There's no quest for him to do, so he is going to deliver sugar to Maracaibo uh, instead of taking a card, because he could do it. And now, he's going to do combat. And he does combat kind of the same way I do. He draws a tile, so we see the relative strengths. And right, so he wants to go with the most powerful. Um, right, see, he wa- and, and for him he, to consider it, he looks at their base strength plus however um, influential he is with them minus however influential I am with them because he's going to make them stronger. And so he doesn't want to help me. He wants to help himself. So of these, Spain is the strongest. Plus one for him plus minus two for me means five down to... Uh, five, four, three means it's means it ties at three. If there's a tie, he will go with France first because let's not forget Jean is a Frenchman, so he's actually going to help the French instead because you see French beats Spain in a tie. So that means he is going to have France claim. He always goes for the weakest island first. So uh, France has uh, claimed a thing, and um, and if there weren't any, he would claim a village, and he moves forward two on the French track. Boom, boom. And so now they love him in France. And that was his move. It is my move now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could make it here right now, but I only have one treasure map. Now what I have to hope is that he goes north and goes around this way so that he leaves that open for me. Oh, and by the way, he keeps track of the fact that he is engaged in one fight. I also have engaged in one fight. I shouldn't have thrown that tile away. Oh, I get because we keep track of these because one of, one of these revealed might say, hey, get points based on how many combats you engaged in and stuff like that. So we both engaged in one fight. He's moved on. Um, he's probably, if he moves one, he'll either come to Cartagena or Port Royal. That So I potentially have time. Um, so if I want to, best my best way to do this is to go to a village, jettison almost my entire hand, and hire somebody, because I got plenty of money. I could hire somebody else and put them to work, and then um, draw a bunch of cards so that hopefully I can get to Bluefields before him. But what would I be jettisoning? Who would I hire? How much money do I have? I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've got the 16 gold I need to hire the, the harbor. But that does me no good. Unless I've got carpentry or... Oh my gosh, I've got so many things to do. So many things to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, other than say, folks, I think I'm going to stop right there. This is actually give you a pretty good idea of what Maracaibo, Maracaibo feels like. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.